right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome back to No Filter MMA, guys. I'm here to talk a little bit about this fight right here, King Casey O'Neill versus Viviani Adarujo. Um I, I wanna I wanna look into the I wanna look into how this fight can actually go down. I wanna look into what we could expect when we see these two actually step into the cage together. Like I wanna break down a few things about what these two do well and what these two do, you know, what these two can improve on. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna start off with um with 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 uh Casey O'Neill. And see, the, the thing about Casey O'Neill, you know what I'm saying? Like, so many people, if you don't come out, if you come, if you don't come out and show that you are a high level striker in, in, in the mixed martial arts game, especially the women's mixed martial arts game, you know what I'm saying? If you don't come, if you don't come out and, you know, the first thing that the first thing, look at how people react. It's about how people react. You know what I'm saying? Versus, you know, how what the fighter really is doing. You know what I'm saying? Natalia Silva comes into the UFC and is shown to be a very powerful striker, you know what I'm saying, and a very clean striker who hurts girls on the feet. And look at the reception that most people give, you know, right out the gate, how, the reception that she gets. You know what I'm saying? People love Natalia Silva. People are calling Natalia Silva, the, you know, a future champ, the next champion. You know what I'm saying? People are saying these type of things about, you know, people are saying that Natalia Silva beats people like Catelyn Chukajian. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the type of reaction that somebody who comes out that's a powerful striker, a powerful, clean, and fast, and high-level striker, that's the type of reaction that that type of fighter gets. But somebody that comes out like Casey O'Neill, who's not the best striker, you know what I'm saying, but a very high-paced fighter, good grappler, with, you know, can take people down, can dominate on the ground and finishes most of her fights by submission. You know what I'm saying? The reception of that fighter is 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 very different. The reception of that type of fighter resonates differently in the women's MMA community. You know, and that's something that I disagree with. I highly disagree with that. And because what what comes with that is a discount of the person's skill set. You know what I'm saying? What comes with that is people saying that this person doesn't stack up to the competition. And it's not just Casey O'Neill that this has happened to. It's happened to fighters like Juliana Pena. It's happened to fighters like Misha Tate. We're talking about fighters who go on to be champions here. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about fighters who become champ. All those fighters that I named, they become champion. And they've been a champion in the UFC. And so I just wanted to throw that out there first when I'm talking about Casey O'Neill. I think that Casey O'Neill, let me admit this, she's not the best striker out there. And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to, and I'm not going to go forward saying that she's the best striker. What I think about Casey O'Neill, I think that her commitment to the striking is something that she doesn't get a lot of credit for. The, her commitment to showing that she can compete with high, you know, can, that she can compete with strikers is something you don't get the very often. You know what I'm saying? You don't get that. You don't in women's mixed martial arts, you don't really I mean, what you do, let me let me, let me take that back. You do have well-rounded fighters. You do have well-rounded fighters, you know what I'm saying? But Casey O'Neill, her commitment to it is part of that edge that you get in her skill set. Like that's part of the her her, her ability to be well-rounded is it's, it's kind of sort of her edge. So her ability to stand and trade in these last couple of fights that she's had, based on what I've seen, you know, based on what we've seen, Casey O'Neill seems to be solid on the feet, you know, and her speed and her tenacity on the feet is, it, it, it is it's worked well for her in, in fights. It's worked well for her in fights. It's got her victory in fight, victories in fights. And being a fan of Casey O'Neill going forward, that that's not an area that I f wouldn't feel comfortable seeing her fight at. A, fight, a specialist like Jillian Robertson, on the other hand, or, you know, other specialists, when, they, when they're out of that comfort, and that goes the same thing for strikers, when they're out of that comfort zone, like Alex Predator, you know, for example, you know what I'm saying? When somebody takes him down, you're like, ooh, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, this is not going to be good. You know, this dude gets them down. It's not going to be good. You know, and I, but I don't have the, you know, that, 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 that same, I don't have it. I, I'm a Casey O'Neill fan. I don't have those same worries about Casey O'Neill standing and trading with somebody, you know, and her pressure is really good. Her pressure, the, these are the, the things that she has working for her are things that spell trouble for, for uh, Viviani Adarugo. You know what I'm saying? The pace, the pressure, Casey O'Neill is going to come forward no matter what it is. When she fought Jennifer Maya, Casey O'Neill, Stay coming forward the whole time. I've preached that. I've preached that. I've preached that. And in every fight, I've been looking at footage of fighters in these upcoming fights, you know, and that's what she does in every single fight. So what we've seen from Viviani Adarujo is cardio. You know what I'm saying? Like cardio is just not, I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what happens to Viviani in a fight. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that, it's things that the opponents do. You know what I'm saying? Like, if the opponent throws her off, like, she just overthinks and then, boom. Because I've heard fighters say in the past that, you know, if you get in your own head, it can mess with your gas tank. You get to worrying about the gas tank, you know what I'm saying? Then you become afraid of it. You, be, you become afraid to commit. You become afraid to, you know what I'm saying, throw caution to the wind because you're worried about your cardio. Um and that is not a good thing in a fight with a fighter like in a fight with a fighter like Casey O'Neill. Look at the Amanda Ebos fight, for example. Amanda Ebos, that's how she beat Viviani Adarujo. Just constant pressure and activity. Constant pressure and activity. But I would like to see Casey O'Neill do this. I would like to see Casey O'Neill tighten up the strikes just a little bit. Because one thing that I noticed in the Jennifer Maya fight was that you know when she would come down with the with the two on the one two, a lot of those twos landed, but a lot of those twos kind of skimmed off the side of Jennifer Maya's face. But Jennifer Maya did a good job of also getting her head off that center line. But that's not the only fight that I've seen Casey O'Neill skim people with that two on that one two. You know what I'm saying? Like her jab always lands. Her jab lands. It's the two that she has trouble landing. You know what I'm saying? So she misses that second punch more than she misses that first punch. Go back and watch Casey O'Neill's fights. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It it either it either misses or it skims. Now, in the in the Maya fight, in the third round, once that two started to land, she started backing Maya up. And that's what I and the whole time I was like, if she had been landing that second punch, followed by that long straight jab, flush, if she would have been landing that if she would have been landing that punch flush throughout this entire fight, we probably would have got a different result. You know what I'm saying? Because as soon as Casey O'Neill started to hit Jennifer Maya, Jennifer Maya started to back up. So it is what it is. Um, I need her to connect those punches. Those punches have to count against Viviani Adirujo, especially in the early rounds, because that is where Viviani is most dangerous. Adirujo is very dangerous coming out in the first round. You know, but Casey O'Neill to me is a much better striker than Montana. Not, I wouldn't say much better, but she's a better striker than Montana De La Rosa. You know, and Montana was able. Montana fought very defensively in that fight, which she shouldn't. She shouldn't have. She should have been more offensive. She should have been coming forward with those shots. But even fighting on the back foot, Montana was still able to land a lot of punches, a lot of strikes. Roxanne Modafferi is another person. And we've seen Casey O'Neill outstrike Roxanne Modafferi. You know what I'm saying? And Roxanne was able to put hands on Viviani. You know what I'm saying? And, and toward the later part of the fight, for sure. But, you know, she still was able to start to touch Viviani. And then um, I think that Casey O'Neill is a better striker than Amanda Ebos. I think Casey O'Neill has a power advantage over Ebos. She uses her length better than Ebos. Her jab is better than Ebos. You know what I'm saying? Just a little, a slightly more pow, power, slightly more power in the strikes than Ebos. And Ebos was able to get off on Viviani Adarujo. She got off on Viviani. And then, you know, we're not even going to talk about Alexa Grasso. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you know what I'm saying? Uh, O'Neal's not, you know, that technical of a striker. But case uh, lesser strikers have beat or challenged Viviani Adarujo on the feet than Casey O'Neill, you know. Now, I don't think that Casey O'Neill 
will try to take Viv. I mean, I don't think that uh, I, I I think that in you know maybe possibly toward the end of round two, maybe in the middle of round two, Casey O'Neill will score a takedown in this fight. You know what I'm saying? Because at that point, we don't, especially if Viviani doesn't look good in round, you know, going in the round, you know, mid, middle of round two. If she doesn't look good in the middle of round two, I expect Casey O'Neill to take her down. I expect Casey O'Neill to take her down. And then, you know, do what she does, see if she can control, get a get some ground and pound off, get a stop. Because if, she, if the fight gets to the ground, Casey O'Neill is going to try to stop the fight. So that's just a given. Flip over to Viviani Adarujo. I think there's a few things that Adarujo can do in this fight. You know what I'm saying? I just think that her, I think she's just going to have to take a page out of that Jennifer Maya book, man. You know, she's going to take a page out of that book, maybe use a little more aggression, come forward a little bit more. Um, Kate, uh, Jennifer Maya, as that fight went on with Jennifer Maya and Casey O'Neill, it turned more into a brawl. Like the later the fight went, the more of a brawl it became. Um, and that's not what Viviani Adarujo, meant, you know, should do. You know, she should use clean shots. You know what I'm saying? Clean, straight shots. Be aggressive with it and bust up Casey O'Neill. Like that's the best way to beat Casey O'Neill. But even in that moment, even in that, I don't even know if that's enough to really stop Casey O'Neill. Like I, th- I feel like you have to sleep or submit Casey O'Neill to stop her from coming forward. You know what I'm saying? Because Casey, just, that's just that's just who she is. She's a pressure fighter, man. She comes forward and, and she's going to be in your face, you know, and she you're going to be eating a jab, you know what I'm saying? She's going to, and then and when, you're, when you're at range, she's got a nice long jab and O'Neal will stick that jab right in your face. She will stick that jab in your face. And Adarujo is susceptible, susceptible to a good jab. She is susceptible to a good jab, so you know I don't. It, it's 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 hard to see a path to victory for Adarujo. Like I said, there is ways that she can win the fight. If, you know, early on, if she can take advantage of you know Casey O'Neill's the 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 the, the holes that O'Neill does have in her stand up. You know, what I'm saying she's not a, she's not an elite striker. You know, she's she's a high pace striker. She's a high pace long striker. We put it like that. That's 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 what she, that's the best terms to describe Casey O'Neill, a long, high pace striker, a high volume striker. I'm not saying she's a, a a high level striker. I'm not saying she's the best striker in the division. I'm not saying that, but she's a high volume, long striker. Her punches come long. She snaps her punches. She snaps the jab. You know what I'm saying? Casey O'Neill has a good jab, and Viviani Adarujo is gonna have to not get ate up by Casey O'Neill's jab. And it's the same for Casey O'Neill. Like, she can't let her face get busted up like Montana's was. You know what I'm saying? Like, Montana got busted up in that fight with Adam from a jab. That was it. It was just a jab. That is the best showing of the damage that you can occur on an opponent with a jab. Montana had cuts. Like, I was like, what in the hell? Like, she had cuts. Nose was busted open. I'm like, damn. And that all came from Adarujo's jab. Every last bit of it. You know, so, we'll, you know, Adarujo has that ability to bust your face up if you if you, if your defense is not good. And that's, that's somewhere that Casey O'Neill has to work is the defense. So I've been thinking a lot about this fight, man. This fight has been brewing in my head for... The past few days, ever since that went down on Twitter when they were saying, you know, I got a fight booked, and then that the post came out or whatever, like, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the next matchup. So, you know, I just wanted to get my two cents on it as far as the fight as a matchup. Um, I just think that lo- the, 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 the ability to fight three rounds, you know, Casey O'Neill is a three-round fighter, so I, I really think she's I'm, – I'm ready to see her in a five-round fight. I'm definitely ready to see O'Neal in a five-round fight, but she's definitely proven to be a three-round fighter. You know, I'm pretty sure five rounds will be nothing for Casey O'Neal to hit. But, you know, it's longevity and just pace and all that stuff, all those tools that Casey O'Neal has, like, it all it all makes sense for her to win. She's got more in the bag than 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 Viviani out of Rujo. She Viviani hasn't really showed us that I mean, out of all the fights, you know, she hasn't really shown us that much. She hadn't really shown us that much. So, 
anyways, guys, let me know how you feel about how this fight could play out. And let's hope we get a date for this fight pretty soon. <laughs> This is your boy BJ back with No Filter MMA. Drop those comments in the comment section. Hit that like, hit that dislike. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Sorry for the long video. And your boy is out.